Hello all, today I have an unboxing. Woohoo, I've been waiting for these for a while. I didn't think that I was gonna get them because I have almost the complete line of Daniel Smith's. Well, not the complete, I have about 63 colors in Daniel Smith, but there was something about the Schmika watercolor set that I absolutely loved. Um, sorry about my cat, he'll be deep planing here in a second. Um, so here it goes. I already did this video a couple of times, once at work, it just, uh, never, just never got under the way, right? So, um, I got this from Jackson Art Supplies, I'll put the link in the bottom, and I found them to be the cheapest for the Schmika watercolors. I was really happy with the delivery. I'm in the U.S. and they're in the U.K. I thought and expected that they would probably take about two weeks to get here, but they got here within six days. I would have got them yesterday except that they needed a signature on pickup. So they came in this box, very well wrapped. So here's the set right here are wrapped. I already um, did this unboxing once already so I know what's in there and um, I got some other goodies. I'm just going to take them out of the wrappers and come on back. If you notice the grand total right here is $204.19. Um, again this is from Jackson's. They're out of the UK. Um, what I liked about this is the price included international shipping. So which means that I didn't pay for any shipping whatsoever. It got here in six days. If I was to order these on Amazon, Dick Blix, or Jerry's, I would be paying about $375 for the 48 set of 48 plus shipping on um, Dick Blix and Jerry's for sure. I have Amazon Prime, so that would not be uh, a problem, but I would be probably still be paying three seventy five for the set if they're available, then another ten to fifteen dollars in shipping, so that brings it up to around four hundred dollars. So as you can see I saved anywhere from a hundred and seventy five to two hundred dollars depending on where you got them in the US. That was one of the reasons why it took me so long to decide whether I wanted the full set or not. I did not plan on buying the 48 um, set. I planned on buying the 36. However, the 36 was out of stock and I wanted them now and I didn't think the 24 would be enough for me because once I go down that rabbit hole of watercolors, I want them all. I also got um, the, um, the new 35 color dark card set. I'm not going to swatch them out. You can see them on other people's um, site. And um, I also got the new um, product line with all of the new colors in them and some new products that they, they do have out. Uh, it's intriguing that they do have the um, full sets with porcelain trays on here, but I just don't think that I would be using it enough for the to use the porcelain tray, especially when I really do like to travel with my watercolor set. Before I open the the box, I want to do a little comparison between this this tin and the tin that I have my Daniel Smith in. This tin from that I put my um, Daniel Smith in is from Whiskey Painters. It's really a very nice um, tin. Let me just open it up. As I was playing with um, the set before, I was thinking of Lindsay's comments about the Schmincke tray and um, the Spin Doctor's um, comments about the tray and that's these edges right here they're very sharp they're um, 
they're blunt but sharp at the same time. My whiskey painter's tray, uh, they do have a little ridge that they go over so it's nice and nice and rounded. I wish they would do that on the Schmincke set. And this tin right here was only $13.99 on Amazon, which was a really nice deal. Not sure if they still have that pricing for the tray only. I did have to buy the um, half pans separately. So this is what I have my Daniel Smith in. And I'm going to close that up, put that aside, because that's not for today. What I have here is the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Schmicke 48 set. Um, the uh, colors are beautiful, amazing. I like that each one of these is wrapped individually with the information on each one. I'm going to show you how I swatch it out in a minute. Okay, so as I started to take the um, half pans out, I noticed a couple of things. Um, first, these aren't like the Medin or the Whiskey Palette kit that I had for my Daniel Smiths. These um, are a little bit, the half pans are a little bit smaller. They're, they're less um, likely to go in and stay very well in the in the tin. So I'm going ahead and putting a magnet under it. I just wanted to show you what the Medine um, half pans look like and why I think they do a better job fitting into the tins. If you notice, let's see if that can focus. Um, you notice right away that the the Medin half pan is a little bit thicker on the sides and it's thicker all around. Um, not sure if this means that this takes less paint than this. It might be just a smidgen or this was made a little bit thicker. So there is a difference between these half pans and these half pans. So I might even be able to get um, more into this if I wanted to add to my collection later on. So what I just did is I just put a magnet strip on the back of it to place it in. And how I'm going to swatch is I'm putting the wrapper here that has all the information about the paint and I can swatch it out easily. And I'd like to have the barcode just in case something happens and I needed to reorder whatever it's there so I do have it. I'll see you in a little bit to give you more of an update as I go along. Okay so moving along very nicely I just wanted to show you that I'm at the completion of this first roll. I wanted to show you how I'm doing this because I think it's really important if you're doing this um, the same way. So I, I'm taking the wrapper off. I'm noticing the color and the number that Schmincke gives each one of the each one of them um, a number. This is 349. So, and I look on the bottom. Some of these um, paints are a little bit different. Some have a sticker on the bottom with the number, and some have the number printed on the side, which I've been doing. Um, for the most part in this row, just wanted to show you. So the 218 on this one has the number on the bottom with a piece of adhesive. And this one happens to have it um, printed on the side. And I just wanted to show you what each one of these are like. What I like about this is the process and how they put each um, pigment into this half pan. They have a four part process and they fill it, they fill it again, and they fill it, and they fill it again. So they fill it at least three times to get it to the top. And if you notice that it's really filled to the top, each one of these, 
so you can see the colors right here. The only color that is a little bit tacky of these um, is this gold one up here. I'm not sure what formulation that they used for this. And the two whites are different. One is just a little bit off-white and this is white. Again, I'm not sure if I am going to use these whites. I normally don't unless it's a gouache. I'm just going to use um, the setup the way they have it for a couple of weeks to see if I like it. If not, I'll take some of these and rearrange it and perhaps get some of the new newer colors. So hold on, I'm going to do the next row. Before I forget, I wanted to show you um, some things that are on the back of the um, some of the um, labels. And that's the cautions. Let's see if I can get it to zoom in. So it shows you um, what the toxic chemical is and where it conforms to for the U.S. So this is really kind of cool, if you ask me, because it's an extra safety tip that goes along to it. I'm probably not going to save it. I'm just going to um, put it, um, glue it to this. I don't need to see the toxic levels in the back. I can always get that from the catalog. Okay, so I am on my final leg of this. Anyway, I have done, set up my tin, working on my swatches that will go in the tin. I've done um, my color swatches, with which the, um, the wrap is on them. I'll show you those later on. I also worked on um, this color chart. I'll show you that in a minute as soon as it finished dries. And um, I'll come back to it later. Hi all, I just finished three hours of preparing my tin, my shrink up tin. I really can't tell you how much I love this setup. I think it's really great. I think the colors are well thought and well placed. I think that this palette is really set up for a couple of different things that you can do. Like you get definitely can do some botanicals with this palette. You can definitely do landscape and you can definitely do some portraiture with this because of these really um, beautiful colors right here. As I said, it took me three hours to set this up, but I think it was really um, a good way to spend some time getting to know the paints. I wanted to talk about the um, the gold and the, the silver and the two whites for a second. The gold and the silver are very beautiful. I really, really like these a lot. I have um, the Ganze tombi set of um, metallics so these are would be a nice addition but I don't really need them in my everyday palette so the two the gold and the silver will definitely be coming out and the whites are also going to be coming out because I think I would be better served with having a little half pan of um, high-end gouache in that I these are the, the swatches of the colors as I said, absolutely beautiful. Really, really um, beautiful colors, overall colors. I don't know if I have a favorite yet, but I really do love these. My least favorite, I have to say, is the sepia because I really enjoy the sepia in um, the Daniel Smith lineup. Again, this is um, my, my Daniel Smith colors and these are my Schmika colors. And um, they, I think, will work beautifully together. So if I am missing a color from my Schmink palette, I can get um, one from Daniel Smith and so forth and so on. So it's not like I bought paints that will go to waste. As I said, the tin, the ones that I probably will not be using, are the gold, the silver, the white, the ivory black, and probably the oxgall. I also went ahead and swatched out the 
35 color sheet anyway because I really wanted to get a, a look at some of these colors and thinking ahead and what colors I wanted. I know um, that I've wanted a perylene green. Um, I like the Daniel Smith, but I'm not totally in love with it. I like this actually more. I also like this blue. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm probably going to get this red. So those are the colors that I'll probably be getting and putting into my tray once I get them. Probably in the next few weeks. These are the um, swatches that that I did. As you can see, I have the um, the wrapper and a color swatch, and I want to see the transparency and see how they would react. Um, I really do absolutely love the blues that are in here, and I do like the. Um, I've been wanting this color for some time, and I think the Daniel Smith color is version of this is called yellow green or green yellow phalo green yellow or yellow green and I for some reason I'm not sure how I'm going to use it in my my um, paintings but I really love that color and I I'm glad that it came in with the set because now I don't have to get that from the Daniel Smith lineup I also really love this color and this color I think all of these colors would um, do really nice for uh, painting water. Okay, this has gone on for too long now. I'll talk to you later, and I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you.